Hey guys, welcome back to Made with Me Simple. In this video, we're gonna see about basal ganglia. Before you start this video, please set your video quality settings to 480p, 720p, or 1080p to get the most out of my videos. Please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon nearby to get notified as soon as I upload a new video. So before starting to know about basal ganglia, you need to know a few important relations to the basal ganglia. First of all, where is it located? The basal ganglia is located on the inner side of the cerebrum. Okay? Just imagine the cerebrum, cere cerebral hemispheres in your brain. Okay? So just in, inside to the just to the inner side of the cerebrum is the basal ganglia. Okay, and it is situated lateral to the thalamus. So, which means, so most medially is the thalamus, the next to it, next to it is the basal ganglia, and next to it is the cerebrum. Just remember this order. So, the basal ganglia basically includes five nucleus. Okay, you need to know all these five nuclei, and you need to remember this. I've got a hint for you to remember these five nuclei which I create which I have created on my own. So first let's see the names of these five nuclei, okay? First there is putamen. The second one is caudate nucleus. The third one is globus pallidus, fourth one substantia nigra, and finally subthalamic nucleus. So each each one of these nucleus is individually important in different functions. Okay? So I've got a way for you to remember these five nuclei very easily. First, let's think about global warming, okay? So this global warming is going to help you to remember the five nuclei of basal ganglia. So let's see the picture on the right side. There is a water can which, is, which has been put over the picture of the globe of Earth, okay? So that water can, I'll put it in green color to help you remember global warming and all that. So just think that we are trying to overcome global warming with this green color water can. So what we have done is we have put a can. We put a can on the globe. Is it right? Yeah. So the put a word from put a word in the put a can sentence is for putamen. The can in that sentence is to remember caudate nucleus the ca from caudate and n from nucleus okay the globe is to indicate globus pallidus so put a can on the globe is to help you remember putamen caudate nucleus and globus pallidus so this is very easy okay just remember this picture on the right and you'll remember the first three nuclei of the basal ganglia the remaining two nucleus of the basal ganglia is also very easy to remember. So, read the second sentence in the lowermost part of the slide. What's that? The substance of basal ganglia is situated lateral to thalamus. This is a fact which I've told you earlier already, right? Yeah. So, the substance, substance in that uh, sentence is to remember substantia nigra. Okay? The substantia nigra. So that will help you to remember substantia nigra, okay? The substance of basal ganglia is situated lateral to thalamus. Is it, is it right? Yeah, I've already told you this thing in the previous slides. So this thalamus is helpful to remember the subthalamic nucleus which is situated below the thalamus. Sub means below, thalamic means below thalamus, subthalamic nucleus. That's it. You remember the fine nuclei of the basal ganglia with this simple picture and a sentence. Just remember this green color can which has been put over the globe. So that's to, that sentence for that is put a can on the globe. That will help you remember putamen, caudate nucleus and globus pallidus. And the rest is um, the substance of basal ganglia is situated lateral to thalamus. This will help you to remember the relations of relations between um, the relationship between the basal ganglia and the thalamus as well as to remember substantia nigra and subthalamic nucleus. Hope that helped you. In this picture you can see few nucleus, few nuclei of basal ganglia, namely the caudate nucleus, pedamen, and globus pallidus. As you can see here, the globus globus and the caudate nucleus is um, almost C-shaped structure. 
it has a head which is corded head followed by a corded body and finally a corded tail it's c-shaped okay it has connections to almost all parts of the cortex the cerebral cortex namely the frontal um, the frontal lobes the parietal lobes etc then next to it closely associated to the cord corded nucleus is the putamen and you can also see the globus pallidus here the subthalamic nucleus and substantia nigra are not shown in this picture however you can see that the basal ganglia which is shown in orange color is closely related to thalamus which is th the thalamus is shown in green color so there are various connections or pathways between the various nuclei of the basal ganglia itself for example there are connections between the putamen and the caudate nucleus the connections between the globus pallidus and uh, the globus pallidus and the striatum so there are various connections between them and there are also connections between the nuclei of basal ganglia and other structures such as motor cortex thalamus corticospinal tract association cortex association areas of the cortex sensory cortex etc okay so the this will this tells you that this tells us that the basal ganglia has connections to various parts of the brain and it in, indirectly or directly um, helps in controlling the motor activities, okay, motor activities and various other activities which we'll be talking about later in a short time. Among the various connections between the basal ganglia and the other structures, the things which we need to remember the, uh, which are the most important are the nigrostriatal tract and the striatonigral tract. As you can see that these, the names are almost the same. The nigrostriatal tract is the tract between the, uh, the substantia nigra. The nigra is put as nigro here. And the striatum, which is basically um, the putamen and the caudate nucleus. These two nuclei of the basal ganglia, that is the putamen, putamen and the caudate nucleus, are collectively called as striatum. Okay? The tract between the substantia nigra and the striatum is called as nigrostriatal tract. And the tract which comes from the which comes from the striatum to the nigral uh, to the substantia nigra is called a striatonigral tract. These two tracts are uh, involved in the pathogenesis. Uh, these two tracts are individually affected in the pathogenesis of uh, two main diseases, which I'll be telling you in the end. Now about the functions of basal ganglia. You must be knowing that the basal ganglia is mainly involved in controlling movements and posture. So in order to execute the movements, starting from a normal simple movement to a complex movement such as dancing or making a gymnastic activity, each and every movement requires a normal function, normally functioning basal ganglia. And to stand erect or sit, sit in a proper position on a chair or do something, you need, to pro you need to maintain a proper posture for which the basal ganglia need to be intact. So the main functions of basal ganglia is to help in maintaining movements and posture. So which nucleus of the basal ganglia helps in which function? First, let's see about putamen. The putamen helps in executing complex movements in learned activities. Now, these activities include writing, drawing, etc. You all may be thinking that writing is very simple. Writing has been made simple because you have already learned it over the, over the many years of your life so that you have learned all the complex activities involved in taking a pen in your hand and making it move in the specific direction and getting the letters which you are thinking in your brain on the paper. So these are very complex movements and but you have learned these activities so that is simple for you and putamen is a structure which helps you in doing this activity correctly. So it's so obvious to understand the clinical aspect of the lesions of putamen, lesions involving putamen. So if putamen is affected by any lesions of putamen, what happens is the learned activities such as writing are grossly affected. So if a patient who has a lesion in the putamen, if he tries to write something on a paper, if he tries to, if he tries to write a letter or a word, it will seem like the person is learning that letter or word for the first time. So it will be grossly affected. Okay? Let's see the next one. The next one is the caudate nucleus. The caudate nucleus helps in the cognitive control of our motor activity. So I've seen a lot of people who are 
messing up with the word cognition. Cognition is basically the memory capacity of the brain, okay, don't get it complicated, it's just the memory capacity of the brain. So, and how the brain responds to the various stimuli, sensory stimuli, or how the brain gets the new things to the memory, okay? So, okay, I'll make it simple here. For example, you see this example here. After you see a dog, a very series of actions normally follows it, okay? So, already your brain would have got many information regarding dogs. For example, there are various things which can happen following seeing a dog. One thing is that the, the dog may chase you, and you have seen many movies or you would have have you would have had any previous experiences which will tell you to do a series of actions for example you can run following a dog chasing you or else you can take a stone and threaten the dog by throwing it on it and or else if the dog is just standing simply a different set of series of actions will be done by you which will be like you'll be just walking without disturbing the dog and these series of actions which happens following any stimuli okay are already stored in your memory and that will be done by that will be helped by the caudate nucleus that's what is written here the caudate nucleus helps in cognitive control of our motor activity okay so the clinical aspect is also so ab obvious here in lesions involving the caudate nucleus these functions get affected so you'll not know what to do and when to do. For example, if a dog is chasing you, you'll not know what to do exactly if you have a lesion in the caudate nucleus. You'll not know if you have to take a stone and throw at it, but you'll be aware at least that the dog is chasing you, but you'll not know what to uh, do and how to respond to it. And the other thing which you need to know is, since the caudate nucleus is so large and it's almost C-shaped, it has inputs and outputs to various regions of the cortex so it's got extensive relationship with cortex now the other functions of the basal ganglia include uh, includes that they control the timing of movements and control the intensity of movements now how do these play a role in any way I see this ex simple example here if you're writing in a, a paper versus if you're writing on a blackboard, things are not the same, right? So if you're writing in a paper with a pen, the timing for that action will be very less. You can write your name in your pen, or you can write your name in a paper with your pen in a short time, and the intensity of movements will be less. You can do it very simply. Whereas if you take a chalk piece and you write on a blackboard, uh, the same name which you're gonna write is gonna be written as bigger fonts written in bigger bigger fonts compared to that which is written on a paper is it right yeah so and the timing of the movements is also affected here you need to spend a lot of comparatively a lot of time on um, writing on a blackboard compared to writing in a paper so these functions are also that is the controlling the timing and intensity of the movements are also controlled by basal ganglia by its input to various areas such as descending tracts, the parietal lobe of the brain, the various um, areas, other areas in the motor cortex, association areas, etc. and mainly to, mainly to thalamus. The clinical aspects associated with basal ganglia are two main diseases which will come everywhere in your boards, in your uh, entrance exams, in your School, uh, in your med school exams. Those include Parkinson's disease and Huntington disease. These two are super important high yield topics and I have not decided to talk about these two in this video because this video is already getting long so I'm gonna make separate videos on these two topics because they are super important and they need separate discussion and, I'm, and when, I make, uh, when I make videos on this topic I'll link the link, link these videos um, in the description of this video okay so keep checking the description of this video or subscribe to my channel and you'll get notified when I post videos on these topics now that's it for today
Help me make, make more videos by donating me on patreon.com slash simple by clicking on the link given in the description below and by doing so you will get access to all the lecture slides I have already made. I think you got the concepts of today's class thoroughly. Please watch it again if you didn't get the concept clearly and you will know all the things you need to know about basal ganglia. The main reference source for this video is Guidance Textbook of Physiology. It's super cool. Um, if you don't have that book already, I have provided the link of that book in the description below. Click that link and buy that book immediately and start learning and have fun. Subscribe to my channel and share this video to your friends and please tell them to subscribe to my channel. In that way, I'll make more videos in the future and you can post your suggestions in the comment sections below. Thank you and have fun.